Good day, back in the shop. Uh, we left off with our 57 here with the bleeding of the brakes. So we're master gonna get cylinder. our master's clutch, clutch. clutch cylinder. The other Duh, still in moron mode here. So we're gonna get going on that. And the other thing we have to do is uh, I'm gonna take you over here and show you what, uh, what we have to do. The drive shaft yoke needs to be changed. The, uh, the uh, one from the Muncie transmission is a much smaller output shaft than, uh, than the T10. Way smaller. So this is like a Turbo 400 style, big, nice, strong piece. All right, so this set went, we had this in a different application. We had to cut down this and then we just put a small bevel on here and we're not really happy with that because that's still a little bit too sharp. It worked in the last thing, but now we're gonna do it a little bit, a lot better. We're gonna dig grinder, we're gonna bevel this off to match the, like that factory bevel on there. And uh, we'll show you that on the time-lapse. And uh, Jeff has been doing some really cool stuff here with, uh, to make the 57 a lot more pretty on the inside. I'm gonna walk over to the little workshop table here and he's gonna tell you what's happening. Check this stuff out, you guys. So, this was the, uh, the gauge cluster that was in the 57. Uh, it was fine, it functioned. It was wore out. There's like you can barely see the numbers. Uh, the the little signal lenses, the oil lens, the generator lens, all that jazz. They were just wore right out, and those things crack. Um, they're basically a little a little disc that over time just hardens up, and you can't see through them. So what I did is I. Well, first of all, I cleaned this. This is a spare one that we got with the car. Uh, much nicer gauges. I actually went in, I had it all right apart, painted it all up uh, to match the, the steering column and the bottom cover, and went in with a paintbrush and I painted all the little, the little lines in the back of the gauges. All this, the, the numbers and everything were fine, so I didn't worry about any of that. Um, so I just painted all that in. It looks 100% better than it did. In comparison, check that out. Exactly. So then I came to the signal. This is what it looked like. There was no, like, normally when you have a signal indicator, it's, it's a color, normally green. So what I did is I, and I've done this before. I actually used this um, technique on my old Pontiac. I wanted, uh, since the car was green and I had green visors on the headlights, I wanted green signal light lenses, I guess. I tried green bulbs, didn't do it. So what I ended up doing with that is I just, I bought a Sprite bottle, or bought a Sprite, two liter bottle, cut slivers in it, basically glued that in behind uh, the glass lens. So now when I use my signals, they're green, which probably isn't legal, but it looks cool. So I used the same idea when I did that, when I uh, filled in the signal lenses. So I basically just took one of the old discs that was basically garbage, traced it out, cut it out. I, uh, I doubled it up, I used two layers of this plastic. So that's gonna glow really nice, I it, think. It looks like super factory. And then with the generator and the oil, they were, they, they were basically like this, just clear. There was no lens whatsoever other than the clear plastic lens with the gen in it. So I just laid it on its back and just gave it a quick spray with some red spray paint. It looks good. When the lights do come on, we're gonna see them. Um, yeah, so that turned out 
really good in my opinion. The paint job's not the greatest, but it's it's good. Um, the chrome strip along the top, I tried polishing it out, but it's very, very thin, and I didn't want to uh, didn't want to mangle it, so I just left it at that. Matches the rest of the car. Like the car's not 100% perfect anyway, so so that's what I've been working on. I uh, can't wait to get that in. So that's going to be the uh, last parts. Obviously, we button up the dash after we play around with this clutch deal. Um, yeah, and we'll show you all that stuff. It's going back together, and you can tell us if you think it looks good or not. All right, we're going to get to work. Right on. Okay, here's the process. Uh, I'm up in the car. Jeff's underneath, and uh, you can see that's the reservoir. And then we've got I got this guy here. Just Jimmy rigged this thing together, and this is all that we got to do to fill this guy up in here. fill it up and then we send that down and then uh, Jeff tells me if he sees bubbles did you push the pedal down the pedals down yep yeah there's like two bubbles okay good and I'm almost like right full I'm almost gonna throw over in my container here that's uh that's good that you're outside the car then yeah. okay now I'm gonna put the pedal back up and then the reservoir itself just dropped. You can just see that fluid is getting, it's actually transferring from here into the container that Jeff's got. And he's got, we'll show you that. We've got a, another camera running here. So we'll fill this back up again. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna overflow here. <laughs> is it still, is it still head coming out there? Of space, you mean? Yeah. Okay, then I'd say close her up. We'll try her out. Yeah. All right, we'll update you guys in a bit. All right, guys, uh, we're back in the shop here today. Uh, we finally got that uh, slave cylinder uh, bled, so that was a bit of a hassle. Uh, wasn't a whole lot of fun anyway, but it, it could have been worse. Uh, anyway, Dave's up in the car now. He's gonna depress the uh, clutch pedal. And I'm gonna show you just how much travel this, uh, this bearing, this uh, throw-up bearing has. Uh, it's quite impressive. Okay, Dave, go ahead. So there's right to the floor, and, and I can easily move the, uh, the clutch disc around. So it's definitely an improvement and an upgrade from, from when, it first, uh, when it first blew up, I guess, or previous to blowing up, but uh, so what we're going to do now is uh, we gotta we gotta add some fluid to the transmission itself, uh, the rear diff. Throw the drive shaft back in. We uh, we got the yoke changed. Uh, there was a different spline for this uh, for the uh, Super T10 as opposed to the Muncie. So so we're going to do that, and we're going to finish buttoning up the inside. So I got to put the brake booster in, finish finish off the steering column, uh, fix up some of the wiring that's. Uh, Quite, uh, quite janky. Get that all buttoned up, and hopefully, uh, hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have this thing rolling out of here. So, we will keep you guys posted, and we'll see you guys in a bit. Let's get to work. Get to work. Let's go. Right on, Dave. You're just sitting there, so whatever. Okay, we found some stuff here which you've already seen. Uh, just wanted to uh, see what not to do. This is a fire hazard just waiting to happen with all the vibration and dry rod on the tape. Uh, we don't recommend wiring like this because uh, that tape's gonna fall off. This is, you're gonna put your dash lights on, oops, sorry. And you're gonna get some of that stuff going on somewhere. And then you'll be driving down the road and wondering why there's all kinds of extra lighting in behind your dash cluster. So what we're going to do is uh, take that all apart and uh, solder it properly. We're, we're taking the household 
situation out of the build here. And uh, just want to let you know that that's, that's not good. So we'll fix her up and we'll give you another shot later. All right. Okay, new problem. So we're putting this all back together here and uh, did a couple applications on the brake. You know, we had to reconnect the uh, linkage and all that fun stuff. And then we uh, wanted to uh, push the car back to uh, lift it up because we were ready to put the uh, uh, gear all in the transmission. And the car doesn't move. So right away as I'm thinking, okay, I messed around, I, I moved the shifter around and uh, now I've locked up the transmission because we actually had the car running and I wanted to just see if the clutch was gonna grab, roll the car a little bit. It did, but it seemed a little bit stiff. Then all of a sudden the brake pedal is so hard, like it's, it's like the line lock was on. So we checked it out. So we open up the uh, top of the master cylinder and this is, there's this, I don't know if you can see that, but this, it's, it's all cloudy and like gray, like it's not, it's not clear at all. And it looks like there's some kind of like gelatin in there. It can't be water. I mean, it doesn't make sense. It's, it's very strange. It's weird. So now we're, uh, I'll take you over here. Have a look. So now we've changed. We've changed that out a little bit. Oh, and hey, check this out, guys. Oh. Turkey baster to the rescue. Gotta love it. So we're, uh, yeah, we just wanna let you know that. So we're gonna get back on this and uh, we'll give you an update as we get everything else uh, sorted out in a bit. Right on. Okay, we're playing around here with uh, cleaning this brake fluid stuff up. Jeff is pumping the pedal, and I said, uh, hit the line lock, back it off. So we line locked it, and then and the, you can tell between the front reservoir and the back. Let the line lock off, and that's the fluid that returned. Pedal was at rest, back, back brakes, and then when the line lock released, this is what flew back up into this reservoir. Never seen that before in my life, no idea. Plus the blue fluid that was also in the, what we showed you there before. So what's happening here, it means that we're gonna, we got probably 20 miles of uh, driving on this new, brand new system, brand new system, four wheel disc brakes, all new lines. Like we, we redid this thing from front to back. So now we're gonna have to take it apart, probably pull the, pull the, uh, cups and the bores and everything out of the master cylinder, clean all that out, fresh fluid, purge out all the lines, uh, collapse the calipers to get all the juice out and replace all the juice. They so just add that to the list of stuff that we've been going on here, yeah. so. Whatever, I didn't break it, man. Not yet, I haven't had a chance. You drove it last. Oh yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we'll, uh, we're just going to add to the video series here of yeah. 57 Chevy being defiant in the shop. We'll get it, we'll get it all sorted out. So whenever, give us some comments. You guys ever seen that before? I've never seen that before. Blue, it was like blue liquid hovering in the bottom of the reservoir. It's very weird. It looked like dishwashing fluid. Almost. Yeah, like Dawn or something. Exactly. Good call. But anyway, we'll... Uh, we're pretty happy right now. Oh yeah, it's ecstatic. So I think we're probably going to have to just walk away and not and frustration, just let it be what it's going to be, because it's not going to get better until it gets a little bit worse. I'm sure. So All right. we'll keep you updated and we'll see where this goes. All right. Later. <laughs>